verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. And if you believe it or not, this message came from my wife. She gave it to me at 4 o'clock this morning. John chapter 8, verse 12. When you guys say amen, you ain't got to say hold up. All right. John chapter 8, verse 12. And then it says, Then he spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall never walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And it says, He that followeth me shall never walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That's powerful. He says, I am the light. He says, I am the light. And what does light do? It shows us where to go. Because if we don't have light, we're in darkness. And we know many people who walk in darkness because they're not plugged into the light. Now, my wife this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, God spoke to her. And it was crazy. Because she, she was like, my alarm went off. I got up, I got up. And she said, baby, baby, I got this revelation. I said, what? And she said, I got this revelation. She says, some people ain't plugged in. I said, hold on. I said, hold on. Because she never talked like this. this. My wife don't ever talk like this. She said, some people ain't plugged in. I said, say that again. And I got happy. Then she, then she got irritated. Be quiet, because you don't like when I get excited about something. But she says, everybody ain't plugged in. What does that mean? God says, I am the light of the world. And if you want your life to be blessed, you have to be plugged in. The problem with many of us is, we think that we are the plug. I remember a long time ago, the kids, one of the kids came to school, and he had this chain on, he had a gold chain on, it was a chain of a plug. I have never seen it like this in my life. And I took a picture of it, I said, this is crazy. And then it was this rap song out that said, I am the plug. And I said, oh, that's tight. He says, I am the plug. He says, I'm the plug. But Jesus is telling you that he's the plug. And if you don't have a life serving him, you're plugged into the wrong source. Let me say it again. If you don't have a life serving Jesus Christ, you are plugged into the wrong source. Most of you have cell phones. And your cell phone, it has a battery. And what happens as you use it throughout the day, the battery starts to go down. And you have to run and you have to find a plug. The plug that we're all looking for is the plug of Jesus Christ. Because if he's not your plug, you are plugged into the wrong source. And if you're plugged into the wrong source, you're going to end up in the wrong place. And you're going to end up in dark spaces in life that God didn't call you to be in. It's interesting. God created each and every one of us special and unique. He did not create a person living on the earth to be broke. Yet we see many poor people. We see people struggling in stress and strife. Because many of us are living beneath our privilege because we're not doing what God assigned us to do. There's not a person born that God didn't give a talent. Each and every one of you has a gift and a talent that you have. But the problem is, you listen to somebody else's voice, you would plug into the wrong source, so you miss what God had for you. Imagine if Michael Jordan would became a carpenter. Imagine, today, this is the day that Kobe Bryant died, last year, one whole year. Imagine if Kobe Bryant became a painter. The problem with many of us is we're working in the wrong places. God called you here, and you over here doing something you ain't got no business doing. Get plugged into the source, and you know where God's called you to be. Next, turn me to John 14 and 6. We ain't we, we almost done. John 14 and 6. John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus says, I am the way. Which way are you going? It's interesting. Uh, uh, I had to go pick up one of my church members. She's at her boyfriend's house tonight. Long story short, I ain't never been to his brother's house. So she gave me the address, and I'm like, hold on, this is the hood. You just can't be stopping and looking at people's houses. You get shot up over here. 
And we had to depend on, what's the thing, MapQuest? I don't know what's it called, what's the thing called? You put it in Google something, I don't know. But we had to depend on the robot. God says, I am the way. And if you're following anybody else, you're going in the wrong way. You're going in the wrong direction. Think about the loved ones in your family. Look at how many of them followed the wrong direction. Each and every one of us got a friend or a family member that's in prison, followed the wrong direction. Each and every one of us has a, a loved one that, that died before their time, followed the wrong direction. God says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then it says, if you want to go to heaven, there's no other name you can call. So you got to call on the name of Jesus. If you want to change situations and change your life, you got to be plugged in and you have to use his name. He's the name that's going to get you in to eternal life. By no other name can any man be saved. By other name can any man be saved. Amen. Turn me to Hosea 6 and 3. Hosea 6 and 3. Hosea 6 and 3. Hosea 6 and 3. It's in the Old Testament. Hosea 6 and 3. Hosea 6 and 3 says this. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Let's say it again. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Okay. Put a pause in that. Then he says, his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, and as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. It starts off by saying, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. One of the coldest passages in the Bible is this. It says, depart from me, I never knew you. See, one day, everybody in this room is going to have a eulogy. One day, Everybody in this room is going to be laid up in the casket. And at that point in time, you won't be here. Because it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And see, the thing is, if you walk up to Jesus, and you just had a car accident, your boyfriend just shot you, who knows, you died of cancer, and you're wobbling up to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I'm here now. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. That will be the coldest sentence you ever heard in your existence. Depart from me. I never knew you. See, the problem with a lot of us, and, and you young people, I'm going to exclude you for this. This is our grown people on this one. A lot of old people play with God. I'm saved. And, and they get up in church and they run around. <laughs> and they start jumping up and down. And they fake it. Because God says, I don't even know you. I don't know you. Let me ask you a question. Do you know God? Don't even answer, because it ain't important. See, I don't need to know whether you know God or not. You ain't got to convince me, because I'm not God. You're going to have to convince him, because he's the one that's going to say, if you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, I don't know you. Do you know God? And here's how you know if you know God. How many of you almost died before? Raise your hand. Amen. You know God. How many of you almost died within the last year? Then you know God. How many of you been in the hospital before? Then you know God. How many of you been shot at before? Then you know God. How many of you been to jail before? Then you know God. How many of you been bankrupt? See, the thing is, you know God by your experiences. That's how you have a relationship with God. Your relationship with God is based on what did you overcome? What thing did you get past? These young ladies, I'm gonna say, let's clap for them again. Hallelujah. They know God. Because they have to bury a mother in two weeks. They know God. It's a song by Marvin Sapp, and it says, Never would have made it. And all y'all know it. Y'all sing it. Never would have made it. Uh-huh. Y'all don't know he wrote that song after he had to bury his wife, who was the mother of all his kids. That man tried to kill himself. He was losing his mind because he's trying to figure out how I'm going to raise these kids. This woman took care of these kids all these years. 
I've never been here. And he says, I never would have made it if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, that's where that song came from. It came from a man who had a broken heart. The thing is, many of you are in situations. Uh, uh, my old pastor used to say this, you're in one of three situations. Either you in some mess, you headed to some mess, or you getting out of some mess. See, that's what life is. Life is just a bunch of uh, highs and lows. It's trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble. See, we get fooled. I, I went to college. I got college degrees. And we think that a college degree is going to save you. All more money means is bigger problems. And I didn't realize that until I got more money. And I said, you know what? I can buy things and do things I never had. Still have problems. Money doesn't stop your problems. But if you are connected to a God who can oversee and do things, you can overcome every problem that comes in your life. And that's what you want. You want to be connected to the source. Because God will never put nothing in your way that you can't handle. And sometimes that's hard. And the last thing, and the last thing, turn with me to Matthew 26 and 58. Matthew 26 and 58. Matthew 26 and 58. It says, but Peter followed afar off from the high priest's palace, and he went in and he sat with the servants to see the end. All right, there's a man named Peter, and his best friend was Jesus. And Jesus says, you know what, Peter? He says, when stuff get tough, he says, you're going to walk away from me. Now, Peter was Jesus' most crazy disciple. He was me on steroids and crap. Now, you see how crazy I am. Peter was way wilder than me. He's a wild boy. He's a gangster. He always was strapped. He, he would try to kill people for Jesus. Peter was a rider. He was God's strongest disciple. And Jesus told him, he says, when it gets tough, you're going to walk away. And Peter was like, hell no, nah, Jesus, I'm with you to the end, homie. I bust on everybody. He said, I'm right here. And when the enemy came, Peter backed up. Peter followed Jesus from afar. Peter distanced himself from God. Now, what does that mean for us? Some of us are following Jesus, but we're following him from way in the back. We follow him from far. Uh, how many of y'all ever been in a long distance relationship? I had one for a couple weeks. It last. That's all that lasted was a couple weeks. Because I started cheating like hell. I couldn't see it. I was like, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to go get it in somewhere else. Uh, you see, when you have a long distance relationship, that's what it is. It's long distance. And see, you don't want no long distance relationship with Jesus. Because if you got a long distance relationship with Jesus, when you need him, it's going to be a long distance call. You got to call long distance. And you have to wait a long time to get back to you. You want to be close with God. You want him to know your name. It says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See, if you close to God, when you speak, he listens. When I get in trouble, you know who I call to pray for me? That little one right there. If you ever need anything done, now y'all know who to call. I don't call none of my big old same friends. I, don't, I got friends that got big old churches. I don't call nobody. I call him. When stuff, when I can't pay the bills, I call him. When it's going crazy in my house, I call him. Because I, one time, I'm going to tell you something, shut up. Uh, I was working on this car. I was working on the car, working on the car. I fixed cars, if y'all didn't know. Long story short, it would not start to save my life. It's the little white car he drove. I had spent money to get it fixed. Nothing would work. I put the motor in. I said, Lord, I tried to start it. I called him. Now, he was 15 at the time. I said, Bishop, put your hand on the car. He said, all right. And he, he just obeyed. Now, look. He, and I said, tell the car to start. And he said, start. Now, he walked away. Now, he probably thought his daddy was crazy. But when he walked away, two seconds later, boom, 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 and that started up. And I started saying, thank you, Jesus. I said, whoa. Now, it only ran for five minutes. 
but it started. The thing is, who do you call when you need a prayer? You need to be that close to God. And if you ain't that close to him, you need to be close to somebody that's close to him. So you can get your prayers answered. Amen. And the last, last thing. Ain't you said that 10 times? You get used to that. All right. And the last thing. Luke 16 and 10. Luke 16 and 10. Do we do? Luke 16 and 10. Thank you. Luke 16 and 10. Luke 16 and 10. Turn up, Bishop. Luke 16 and 10. It says, he that, is in faith, he that is faithful in that which is the least is also faithful in much. Then it says, and he that is unjust in the least is also an unjust in the much. Verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you the true riches? All right, let me translate that. It says, he that is faithful in that which is the least is also faithful in that which is much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in the much. All right, let me translate that. All right. When you were a little boy or girl, you had a dream. You wanted to be a fireman, policeman, football player, a nurse, a doctor, a lawyer. You wanted to be a movie star. You wanted to be all these great things. And the thing is, you believed at that point, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that you could do those things. And when you believe that thing, guess what? God was listening to you. See, Jesus loves the prayers of a child. The reason why I called Bishop to pray for that car wasn't because I thought something was special about my son. He's just a boy like anybody else. But I read in the Bible where Jesus says, Come, suffer not the little children to come unto me. What that means is this. God loves children. And he listens to the prayers of young people. See, he don't listen to us old people. We already corrupted and did all our mess. These young people are connected because their souls are still pure. Long story short, you had a dream once upon a time. But as life went on its way, you got distracted. You got lost. And when you got distracted and lost, you lost the vision. Now, God deposited in you a gift, an anointing. He deposited something in you. What have you done with that gift that God has given you? Have you given up on it? See, the thing is, once you can sing, you can always sing. Once you get that, that's why I do them dancing videos. I'm 51 years old. I'm a dancer until they put me in the in the box. And I might be in the box shaking. I might be in the casket shaking because God made me a dancer. I'm not going to neglect that gift because I don't want to be embarrassed. I'm going to tell you a secret. If God made you a singer and you don't sing, you're going to be embarrassed when you're over there at Walmart working and you're supposed to be, uh, uh, you're supposed to be Luther uh, Vandross or Whitney Houston. God called you to do something great. Why are you doing it? Because you don't want to be embarrassed in front of your friends? You need to do the thing that God's called you to do. Because when God created you, he put that thing in you for a reason. And you're ignoring it. Because I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. And God said, I only create you for that one purpose. Everybody stand. Everybody grab your hand. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. What is true riches? What is true riches? Some of us believe true riches are houses and homes and cars and diamond rings and trips and all these different things. But you know what true riches is? What we're doing right now. This is a circle of love. You cannot purchase love. You cannot purchase joy. You cannot purchase life. You cannot purchase health. 
and you cannot purchase tomorrow. All of those things are gifts from God. See, the, the love that you see here, these best friends, they've been friends for at least 40, 30, 40 years. You can't buy that. You can't even fake that. The love that y'all have, these two best friends right here, uh, that's the new version of y'all right there, them two right there. Uh, the, 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 that's the Sanford and the Simon. They're they, they best friends. You can't buy that. That's a gift from God. See, the thing is, you only get a few friends in life. You do, maybe two or three, maybe max. Everybody else is just people that you know. You only get two or three friends. So the thing is, these are friends that God put in the heavenlies for you. That came from God. So what we have to understand is, value the true riches that God has given us. Don't work for false gold. I, I have friends who are rich. My, one of my richest students, he had $300 million. DeMar DeRozan. I have 31 students that are millionaires. Money don't buy you nothing but a lot of stuff. But this is the thing that God has given you. So cherish these moments. Love each other. Spend time with each other. Speak good to each other. Because this is the joy that the God has deposited inside of each and every one of you. And do not neglect your gifts. I remember there was a woman. She was 73 years old. And she wanted to go to college. And some of y'all know the story. She ended up going to a school called UCLA at 73 years old. She graduated at 77. Her friends said, you crazy, you about to die. But when she walked across that stage, she told a young person, she said, I did this to show you that it's never too late to pursue the dreams that God deposited in you. One of my ex-girlfriends, her, her father started medical school at 38. His friends thought he was retarded. His wife had just died. He had to take care of four kids by himself. And he said, I want to be a doctor. And the only reason I knew this story because she told me that as a three-year-old, she used to have to go into the mortuary with him because that's part of the medical school. And one of the bodies jumped up and she never forgot that she told me the story. But he ended up becoming a doctor at 42 years old. And he's still a doctor to this day. It's never too late to pursue the thing that God's called you to do. Because whatever God has called you to do, it's for you. So walk in your anointing. Look at all this you. Give them a hand clap. Hallelujah. You guys are tomorrow. You guys are going to be amazing. That's why we keep these doors of this church open. Because it's for you. God is going to do special things in your life. You guys are powerful. Keep believing in that. And believe in yourself. Everybody grab a hand. Let's wrap it up. So anybody got a word? So we wrap it up. All right, everybody grab a hand. Grab a hand. Grab a hand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this bounty of you. Father, continue to protect them, Father. We ask you, Father, to help us to become better versions of ourselves, Father. Make 2021 the best years of our life, Father. Help us to do the thing that you've called us to do. I rebuke the enemy over any of these young people. I speak positivity. I speak dreams. I speak success. I speak your blessings. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity to the hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into the hand. That these young people will come to the hand and not to tell. That they become victorious and never defeated. And that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Give somebody a hug. Hallelujah. Hug somebody. All right, we got some fried chicken in the back.